Hey guys, Dr. Crocker here. So I'm so, so excited to have this live. I had an idea for a while to do lives based on veterinary careers and I am really, really excited to have a zoo veterinarian on first because that's probably one of the ones I get questions about the most. Uh, she is actually graduated from Texas A&M University together and hey, hey, what is happening? Sorry about that. I am um, in the process of moving offices, and um, I was just trying to get my computer stuff set up, and so was, I was like, oh my gosh, it's 601. Let me get on there. Oh, I no, apologize. you're good. The, the storm right now here, my Wi-Fi messed up, and I had to like run to my mom's real quick, and I'm like in, running in the rain because I'm living next oh, to yeah. her right now. So you're, I like you're... that we're both repping some A&M stuff. Yes, um... I know. I know. I was like, <laughs> I didn't question. intend to. I was thinking I would take this from home, but... Um, as I'm sure everyone knows, uh, sometimes our schedules are a little unpredictable. Yes. Um, but but are here you we are. working today or not? Yeah, I was working today. So um, just trying to finish up some, it's my Monday. Um, so I'm on a Sunday through Thursday schedule right now. And so I was just trying to go through some emails, get through the, you know, get the week set up. And, yes, uh, yes. So. I like it. Well, we're going to get to your schedule and okay. all your stuff because I got, <laughs> A billion questions and I'm like Excellent. really really excited we have a ton of people watching and a lot of young pre-vet students vet students and a lot of people ask me about zoo vet track and I had yeah. honestly no clue and I know we talked about a little bit at our reunion mm -hmm. um, so I appreciate you coming on here because I was yeah I appreciate the chance to get to talk to folks yeah yes awesome. yes so okay first introduce yourself and tell us where you're currently working and then we'll start like back at the beginning yeah um, so I'm Meredith Clancy. I am um, currently, um, my last day today, um, a senior veterinarian at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. Tomorrow, I am um, our veterinary clinical operations manager. What? It doesn't change a lot, except um, <laughs> um, I'm in charge of the vet team now. Um, so I've been at the Safari Park for coming up on six and a half years. Um, and we're going through a rebuilding phase. We had some retirement. So um, I get to be in charge now, which is exciting. I get to help um, run the team and um, get us uh, recruiting some new amazing uh, zoo veterinarians. Um, but that's yeah, so that's where, hmm. where, that's where I'm at. Yeah. Yeah, this is like a nice little way also to be like, oh, and by the way, we're hiring. So if there's <laughs> anyone like really interested. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Okay, so real quick, uh, San Diego has like, the zoo has separate parks kind of, right? So you're mm -hmm. safari park, so it's a little different, right? Yeah. We're all one big happy family under San Diego Zoo Global. Um, it used to be the Zoological Society of San Diego. So the zoo was founded in um, like over 100 years ago now. And then the Safari Park was built in 1972 um, as kind of a big um, out in the wild of Escondido. So we're in North County, San Diego with big old field exhibits, yes. lots of huge hoofstock populations, lots of bird populations, um, primarily for population sustainability and breeding. So okay. um, to keep those valuable genetics of endangered species going, um, to be able to have animals that exhibit wild natural behaviors if they don't have a wild or nature necessarily to live in and things like that. So. Um, but we're all one big happy family, so they're previous to retirement, so we're seven full-time veterinarians at the park and seven full-time veterinarians at the zoo. Uh, right huge. now, there's only uh, four or five-ish, uh, like four and a half-ish of us at the park, um, so that's why I get to work on Sundays, um, but it's a fun time. Yeah, um, is retirement, like, COVID-based, or was it planned for a long time? Or it was a planned for a long time. So okay. when I started at the Safari Park, I was, um, like, right out of residency, which we'll get to. Um, but I was joining a team full of um, gentlemen who had been zoo vets for almost my entire lifetime, if not longer. So nice. one of my office, the guy that had the office next to me, had actually um, started working at the park three months after I was born. Um, and there was Gosh. a fellow that had been at the park for 45 years when he retired. That's crazy. So it was a well-deserved, uh, yes. we lost, we were like. joking, over 100 years of veterinary experience with that. Um, and I feel very lucky. And my colleague, we got to, like, soak it in while they were there. Um, so that's why we're being really, uh, we're excited about kind of the future of bringing in a brand new team to, yeah, to start like things a, anew. Yeah, a new wave, a new generation. That's really, really exciting. But, you know, yeah. that that like speaks a lot to the career too, that people stay in it for so long. Yes. That means like, I know, and this was one of the top questions I got was it's 
extremely competitive um, yeah. to get in in the zoo med track and and all that and so we can talk about you know kind of how competitive was yeah. for you but it, you really have to love it because you have to work so hard for it yes. you know and I think it's it's the perfect um, example of like serendipity of being having an absolutely great amount of experience and all the right things right at the right time. So, so much is timing. Like I feel so blessed that, um, and I, I always tell people, it sounds like it all worked out, but I definitely left my residency without a job in the midst of like interviewing and stuff. And no one, I don't talk about that three month gap where I'm like, am I gonna ever be a zoo vet? Like, yeah, what's gonna happen? Um, because it all worked out. And so you're like, oh, of course, yeah, it was meant to be. Um, but I think um, it is, there is a lot of hard work. And I think at each um, each point, there's a, a bottleneck. So like a lot of people enter vet school wanting to do zoo medicine. And then fewer people maybe leave vet school, that still is their dream. A lot of people enter an internship and then there's fewer zoo internships or fewer zoo residencies. And then you're like, oh, I got the residency made in the shade. And then it's like the finding jobs. the right job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, especially if people aren't retiring for, you know, 50, <laughs> know. 60 years. Like I know we joked, we were like, this is a great opportunity, though, because it's like a net gain. Like, it's not people moving around. It's like, here are three open positions. Yeah, that's enjoy. awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Well, I'm, I'm excited to kind of hear about everything. Now, yeah. not to put you on the spot, but we did go to school together. And yeah. you were one of the youngest people in our vet school class. Yes. True. Okay. Yeah, I had... Um, I always, yeah, so I don't know that I would make all the same decisions. Obviously, it worked out, and I'm very right, happy. Right. But I applied to vet school um, during my first, like, right after my first year of undergrad. I came in with credits from, like, AP and IB classes, and I was like, I want to be a vet. Yeah. I don't need to go to college. I just want to be a vet. Yeah. And let me tell you, kids, college is amazing, and napping in the middle of the day is amazing, and you never get that opportunity Summers, again. spring break, like, all yeah. of that goes away, and you have to adult, and it sucks. Yeah, you don't get Stay spring breaks school. or summers. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, so I entered vet school at age 20, um, which was okay. an interesting decision. Um, I had a lot of growing to do, and I was very lucky that I had a very cool class that, like, understood that I needed to mature a little bit. Um, but, you know, you also... If you're gunning from the get-go, um, you don't ever like, necessarily settle into that maturity of um, studying and learning that sometimes is really helpful in vet school. And I think for me, um, was really helpful when I was settling into that and learning that when I was studying as a resident and studying for zoo vet boards where you have to like, there's, there's so much information you gotta cram in your really head. Yeah. Um, and it's like, I think back and I'm like, man, if I had done this a little differently. But yeah. of course, like I said, it all has worked out. I'm really happy with where I'm at. But I oftentimes when I'm talking to pre vet students or high school students, I'm like, you don't have to be a gunner like me, you can really um, you can take your time experience life like being yeah. being in your 20s is fantastic. Like, yeah, spend all the time you can doing that. Well, I, I'll be honest, I can't imagine being in vet school and not being 21. I mean, I'm sure there's ways to get around there. But <laughs> We had a really I good time. It was during school. first year. We had like a cake in physiology. Yes. I remember there was like, it was a big deal. Yes. Very like exciting. all of our outings were like at bars to get to know each other. And I'm just thinking oh, yeah. like, Mary's like, can someone like. Uh, yeah. Like I'll just have this. Um, yeah. this uh, Shirley Temple. Over here. It's not a hard cider. It's just actually apple juice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Well, let's go back. So before okay. vet school, you were in undergrad not very long and a lot of mm -hmm. students were asking like what can we do now as yeah. pre-vet students in an undergrad and are there opportunities for them to uh, work like I know we have fossil rim here and they take mm -hmm. like interns oh, and, yeah. mm -hmm. you know they'll live out there and, and take care of the animals and do some stuff over the summer but do yeah. you know kind of what you would recommend for pre-vet students if they're thinking about the zoo track yeah so that's a really great question it kind of depends on um where you're at um in yeah both geographically and then where you're at in schooling so one of the things that i think about and it's really great to talk to you now because we're in the midst of selecting our next resident um so we get i'm not going to make people like freak out but i have 84 applications for one position so what yeah so um the things that help a candidate stand out um are things like i did undergrad research it doesn't have to be in zoos it's like right. i helped in a lab i did biology research or wildlife research um, and I think it's important to remember, um, and if you're an undergrad as pre-vet, um, there are 
professors that are going to want to help you. Um, mentorship, mentorship, mentorship yes. is what got me where I am. Um, when I was 12, a young 12 year old, um, I lived by the Dallas Zoo. You're like an um, freshman in college at 12. Yeah. No, <laughs> um, I lived by the Dallas Zoo and I would, um, I was a junior zookeeper there, which was like, you know, yeah. I, I helped take care of a goat pen and like feed chickens and stuff. But like, it gives you animal experience. It gets you into the zoo field. And while I was there, I actually met one of the veterinarians at the Dallas Zoo, um, Dr. Katherine Gamble, who has been like my lifelong mentor. I've now known her a, a very long time. Um, our that. friendship is old enough to drink and all of that jazz too. But um, <laughs> she has been the person that helped, like that I could reach out to and ask questions mm -hmm. of and kind of helped me. Um, I did an externship at the zoo that she was at after she left Dallas Zoo, which is at Lincoln Park Zoo now. Um, but I think I did some summer research with her um, at that zoo. So you can also reach out, like you said, Fossil Rim. You can, and sometimes it's not glorious. Like you're not doing a behavioral study on chimpanzees. You're like shoveling poop yeah. and <laughs> learning from keepers how you do animal observations. But yeah. that's really important. Yeah. And you yeah. can sometimes make really good impressions. Like they'll have like hospital internships and We've had students that worked with my boss, Lauren Howard, when she was at Houston Zoo, because um, they had a hospital internship and she just remembers like, they were fantastic. Like, yeah. they were always willing to help and the techs loved them. And, you know, they had always researched cases and came to us. So I think um, kind of looking at the dual track of either like, can you volunteer at a zoo or wildlife facility near you? Um, and then can you work and do some undergrad research where you're maybe, you know, honing your chops there, um, like on how do you set up a paper or an experiment or ask really good research questions. Um, those things kind of help you stand out um, when I'm looking at like what you can do in pre-vet time. That and like make, you know, take good classes, learn yeah. good things, have a very well-balanced um, experience. I think um, for many of us gunners that went into undergrad and then straight into vet school, the other thing is like you're convinced you have to be pre-vet or zoology or something like that. And you Not don't. No. Um, I'm sure Tanasia can speak to the fact that like communication, that would be great. Um, there's some I, I social. Tell everyone, take drama yeah. classes. Drama oh, yeah. classes are great. Um, we have people in our class that were computer science majors. Yeah. Um, I was biology. I wasn't pre vet, pre med anything. Yeah. I was straight just biology and got like a psych minor. And all those yeah. classes have been really helpful as yeah. a veterinarian. So yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, you can like kind of broaden, like just think of it as building like a really good solid foundation of like understanding people, communication. Mm -hmm. um, if you're really into research, like a hard science is a, is a great thing. Yeah. Um, but you know, like we had math majors and um, I know someone that uh, works at the park. She's one of our most amazing keepers, but like her degree is in interior design. You know, it's whatever, whatever. you need to get you the skills to the next step. Yeah. And I, I do like networking, I think is huge. And yes. I did that in like undergrad too. And I did student worker positions for clinicians. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I went, just did blood draw for research, but I got my name on research papers. Like yeah. that kind of stuff is, is clutch. And, and the industry, it seems like the zoo industry is small. Yes. And so some of it is like, not what you know, but who you know. Yes. And so that, that connection is really, really, really important. So. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. Like when I look at applicants that have worked at this zoo, um, I like look and, you know, I can pick up the phone and call that vet and be like, hey, what's up? You know, like, let's talk about this candidate. Or um, I think the other thing that you hit on networking and, and mentorship is um, I always think about this because I saw a couple of um, applications where they were talking about, oh, I went to this this vet school because of its zoo program. The other thing to think about is you're not going to get trained to be a zoo veterinarian in vet school. Like yeah. you're going to learn on the job in an internship in a residency. So go to a veterinary school where you're going to excel and where you're going to have good mentorship or good a professor or two or clinicians that will be able to write you amazing letters of recommendation because you've done an amazing job. Um, do they have to be, do the, should those clinicians be like zoo or exotic or do you think it could just be somebody that cares That's, about you and is like yeah. this person's for, awesome yeah when i was applying out of fourth year for a small animal rotating internship which we can get to but yeah um i had clinician i had one zoo clinician that like my mentor that i've known a long time mm -hmm. and then the rest were just like clinicians at AM that knew me that like knew that i was a good clinician right um and leaving my small animal internship and applying it was the same it was i had like an internal medicine and a surgery 
clinician because they could just say like Meredith did a great job with us like she was a great intern I yeah. think she'd make a great resident more so than having a zoo person that maybe has only met you for three weeks and like right. doesn't know you that well yeah you really need someone that can sing your praises with like individual known experience rather than like this person is so nice yeah they, they showed up make the time. profession look great. Like you can yeah. read the ones that like, it's the same thing they write for everybody for sure. So no, that's, that's great advice. So we've moved into vet school. And I think a lot of what we talked about in pre-vet is still applicable, like um, connecting with people who are, have the same interests, networking, yeah. getting as much hands-on as possible. But you also were like in leadership roles. Um, and I think you did like the council for diversity and professionalism. Yeah. Like I was on, like, there was other things you did. So tell me about the vet school years and kind of the things you focused on and did other than just having so much fun at the best vet school uh, ever. Best, but with the best class ever. I, I mean, ever. let's not lie. Seriously. <laughs> um, I mean, I think, yeah, so it's, it's so true. Like everyone that's gonna, that wants this career path is gonna probably be involved in their zoo and exotics club and you should. And it's not because you need to be president to get a residency, like that's not required. No. But by being in leadership in those organizations, you get to kind of sometimes get FaceTime with the speakers. You get to pick who you want to bring in or interact with. You can kind of change some wet labs or a field trip whenever field trips exist again. Yeah, um, What's that? To go down and meet folks and you get it just like a little bit more um, experience. But I think the other thing that's like a soft skill that doesn't necessarily come through on um, an application so much, but like when you see that someone was in leadership or in organizations, you know, like they know how to run things, they yes. know how to multitask and maybe um, coordinate with people professionally. Mm -hmm. They um, have like some some uh, initiative and self motivation to be able to kind of get the job done. Um, but I think it also can show that you have um, other interests that kind of help bolster you because. I was just talking to um, the interns that are at where I um, did my small animal internship just last week, actually, um, about um, what a transition it is from going from postgraduate training to all of a sudden being the, the thing doctor. you always wanted to be. And you're like, wait, what now? What now? What do I do? Like, how you're like kind of like this, but you're yeah, like, how like do this I define or... success? Yeah. Like, what makes me happy? Yeah. Who am I as a human yeah. being if I'm not like <laughs> seeking all these things? And it's like, it's about figuring out what else interests you too. Mm -hmm. So like you can be an amazing like, you know, clinician, but it's cool too if you're really like the folks that we know in our class that are really interested in like the state um, veterinary medical associations yes. are, are really involved in AVMA. If that, if that speaks to you, like go and do it. If mm -hmm. it doesn't, find something else that does to also show that you're doing that because one of the things I also did all the way through third year I didn't in fourth year because I spent so little time um actually That's at cool. AM because I was at all yeah. these different zoos was I was still in our symphony orchestra playing viola through all through undergrad and vet school and that was really fun that. It, yeah. it kept me like sane it gave me something yeah. else to do um you know after studying physiology for like 28 hours you know yeah yeah, I would, yeah. I would go and dance, like dancing oh, yeah. was like, it, or like go play dominoes or like, oh, yeah. there was definitely, I, I tell people all the time, that school to survive, I think you have to like play as hard as you work. Um, yeah. And if you just work all the time, I don't think you get the skills you really need to succeed after school as well. Like you have to find that yeah. balance, or else you get out of school, and you're just a stress anxiety ball. And you don't and you have to, like, like, it's almost like you fall off a cliff. You're like, gunning gunning with all these goals and then all of a sudden when you get it you're like I don't know how to define who I am or what I want out of life other than like these things I have that maybe aren't making me as happy as I thought they would by right. just checkbox achieving and so it's like right. living your career is really fun and realizing how you can grow and change is really fun but so is like having others other stuff yeah. to do like and having that, that. that like support system and group yeah. that and you had a really great group of very yeah. smart, motivated, but also like to have fun, like group yeah. of friends. And that was yeah, huge. Absolutely. And, like you would start with a little studying and then you would end with like, yeah, going, hanging out all night or going to a party or something like that. Yeah. Yes. And it's so very true. Like the, we're, I think everyone in my vet school class, right? Like we all would pass each other if like we 
as strangers met, we'd be like, oh my gosh, let's catch up. But we yeah. all also have, I think, like really tight knit groups of friends. And so many people I know that go through professional school, if it's law school, medical school, vet school, they have that from those times. Cause it's like, you're like in the trenches together, you know, <laughs> you, you've been through things together. Yes. And it also helps that you're all at an age where you're really figuring out what what you want out of life a lot of you know people get married people have babies people start and end relationships and it's so critical to have people around you that can help you with that and that'll help you yeah throughout the years like it, we have a whatsapp was. chat that we're on almost daily yeah checking in that. on stuff yeah I love, you need to i'm trying to convince bugby to do one with me for internal meds you need to yes. Yeah, I, I was like, I don't even know if you're on Instagram, but I think Lindsay's gonna do a radiology one with me. But oh, I'm like, nice. our class is awesome. I have all these yeah. people I can reach out to. I always do. joke. I use Lindsay's joke. I totally stole it from Dr. Lindsay Gilmore, a very brilliant radiologist. Yes. Um, but she t likes to tell her class. She's like, listen, I didn't get an A in radiology in vet school, and I like to tell people like I do so much um, hoofstock nutrition now, and so much parasitology. Um, in our collection, and I'm like, didn't make A's in those classes. Yeah, I know. No. I love it, and I know a lot. <laughs> well, that, okay, so that brings us to a good point, yeah. tracking in school. Like, I don't know if schools are still similar, but we had, like, large animal track, small animal, mixed animal, and then I think you're, it was, like, alternative. alternative. Yes. Yeah. You were just, you didn't even get, like, a name. You no, were we were just, just alternative. <laughs> the other. Yeah. So I don't believe alternative exists at AM anymore, which is okay. a blessing and a curse. Um, so I do know there are plenty of other schools. So obviously in California, I spend a lot of time chatting with Davis folks and they have a zoo track. There's some other zoo um, schools that do too. Okay. So kind of back to two points. One is you do not have to have a lot of zoo experience during your fourth year. You are not, no one is going to judge you by how you graduate vet school to see whether or not you can be a zoo vet. You're going to learn a lot post-graduation yes. um, and in your externships and things like that. So for me, alternative track at A&M was so I could go do, I did three really awesome externships. I spent time at Lincoln Park Zoo, at National Zoo, and at the San Diego Zoo Wild Animal Park, nice. Um, nice. as it was called back then. Um, and so obviously that worked out nicely. I did also go to those because they had residencies and I mm -hmm. wanted to kind of, there were three very different institutions and I kind of wanted to see how I liked it. Yeah. Um, but I think the other thing is um, you can like what we look for in at least me and our resident group is someone that has a really great basis of medicine and surgery. Like, but you need to be able to know how to manage a clinical case of renal failure in a cat before you're worrying about renal failure in a cheetah. Like yeah. it's the same principle. And so a lot of times you get a lot of really great hands-on experience um, if you're doing large animal or small animal, but maybe less um, hands-on and more shadowing and just mm -hmm. standing there if you're doing zoo. And so one of the things you can miss out on if you spend so much time trying to track zoo is the hands-on experience of really managing primary case responsibility. And some okay. people make that up in a small animal internship or large animal internship, but you just... And however you make it up, there's a mosaic. Everyone does it a little differently, but the kind of classic way that a lot of folks are gearing towards getting a zoo residency is um, they'll spend some time with externships in their fourth year, however they need to track to do that. Um, and whatever they do to be able to get some time um, to spend at a zoo or two. But um, you either come out and go into practice and get some experience there, or you do an internship in small animal, mixed animal, large animal, um, before you jump straight into exotics or so is the, or something like that. Is the chance of pretty much going from school straight into an internship for exotics or zoo is pretty much nil, you right? You can. People do. Um, you're not going to get a res. Well, you, you aren't going to come out straight out of vet school and get a residency. That okay. I can tell you. Right. Um, right. At, at least, like, there's very minimal chance. Um, right. A lot of folks do um, go straight into exotics or, um, a, like, a zoo internship, and that's fine. I just, um, I, I always have a little reservation that I wonder if they feel confident managing all hosts of cases. If, like, you know, because you just don't see necessarily the, num the number of cases or, like, right. the diversity that you might want to. Um, so I think it, and it, I get it. Listen, I went to vet school at 20. I get it. You want to yeah. get there. But like, it's kind of worth that extra time to get your 
skills. Like I, the story I tell people is like when I was in my internship, like September. So I've been an intern for two months. I'm at BCA <laughs> West LA Animal Hospital. And we're talking about a pyometric case and my um, internal medicine um, like mentor is trying to get me to talk about nephrogenic diabetes and sipinus. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. No. I literally never heard those words yeah. before. And it's like, maybe I would have if I had spent a little more time at a and going through rotations or, you know, like that's where I learned it was in yeah. my internship. Whereas now I've actually seen a case of it in a zoo animal, but I wouldn't have ever known that if I had just like jumped straight up. Jumped Maybe I slept it. during yeah. that part of the lecture. Who knows? Yeah. But um, I doubt that. I but doubt yeah, that. it's exactly. But it's one where you there's so much foundational medicine knowledge before you start branching into the diversity of animals that sometimes it's really good to get that. I I like that, and I think that's important because I always felt like um, I. I always was going to do equine. I was mm -hmm. never going to do small animal. I never did anal glands. I really didn't pay oh, yeah. attention to like preventative medicine. You know, like I was like, I don't need to know any of this. Yeah. I'm doing. And now, I mean, I diagnose, you know, Addison's and Cushing's and deal with diabetics and all I do is small animal. And I really wish I had understood that the foundation was something I needed no matter what I ended up yeah. doing. And there's so many possibilities in your career that it's good to kind of be open. I did always feel like exotics and zoo animal people, just their like animal handling and those skills were like so superior, but I can see where that stuff will come. Yeah. But all the other foundational stuff is actually really, really important too. Yeah. Right. I think that's, just, I wouldn't have thought about that. Before. Yeah. It's just, it's just like managing a reading through CBCs, like looking at radiographs, like you want to look at like I don't know, 150 radiographs of a you know foreign body in dogs or cats before you're looking at one in like a weird species that you have, like what is that yeah. even supposed to look like? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Run the gut of a couple of tigers or a couple of like domestic cats on a CT before you're running the gut on a tiger. On a tiger. That cardboard yeah. box blockage that you have to then worry about. Yeah. yeah. I like that. That's, that makes a lot of sense. So yeah. we're going to try to network at vet school. We're going to get hands-on experience, but we're going to try to pay attention to everything because yeah. foundation is really important and everything you learn about dogs and cats or horses totally even, applies. Yeah, can apply. And just those relationships, building those relationships is big. So we're at the end of vet school mm -hmm. and you, I had a couple people and I think you're really open about this, but yeah. they were like, did you match? And so tell me yeah. a little bit about the process and everything. Yeah. Afterwards. So I matched for my internship, my small animal internship. And I knew I wanted to do a small animal internship mainly because all honesty, I went to the zoo vets conference in 2006. That's something else we could bring up. Feel free to join the student chapter of AAZV, come to a conference, maybe even try and present something that you've worked at on with someone in your school like that because you've never yeah. done done that. A more from an externship, but I walked around the room at student night and I literally asked everyone, like, what do I need to do to be a resident? So that's where this map came from. Yeah. But um, I went to VCA West LA. Um, I loved my small animal internship and then I did not match coming out of West LA. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's yeah. back up because a lot of people hate their internships. Yeah. I loved my internship because I had a goal and I visited and I went to a place that oh, really yeah. fit my needs. Mm -hmm. How did you pick your internship? Because you had to like pick them too. And yeah, so and, like, I do. Um, so I always um, tell people like your, your, whatever your first year internship is, is going to be the most choice you will have until you're looking for a job. Potentially, okay. if you're looking for a new job, maybe less choice. But yeah, <laughs> you know, you can go anywhere geographically. Do you want a big intern class, a little intern class? Do you want general practice like surgery experience? Do you not? You have so many choices. Right. So my a mother's mother, my grandmother lived in Manhattan Beach, California. Okay. And I was like, I love Southern California. And I would love to be able to live rent free with my grandma um, for this year and just really like enjoy this year. So I had the West Coast there. And then I had some East Coast things um, that I looked at. And that was it. And I knew I wanted an intern class greater than five. Um, okay. And folks that did general practice, because I knew coming out of having done a ton of zoo stuff, I did not have like, yeah, like you said, the foundation, the ear, yeah, multiple laceration <laughs> repairs. Like that's listen, I do. I do laceration repair all the dang time here. Like it's great. I learned it in my internship. Yeah, I love that. Um, so that is how I chose there. And I was I was really thrilled. I went to West LA and visited too. And it was like, Oh, it's like you walk in and you're yeah. like, this is it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, especially if you can live there rent free. Now I have to pay oh, rent. Yeah. Like <laughs> living in LA rent free. Yeah. Would, would recommend. Um, yeah. But um, so when I um, so I remember the day came for reading the match results. I was out on the West Coast. Um, and I like woke up at five and I checked it and it was like, you did not match. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to be a zoo vet. Everything's the worst. What have I done? So you were um, applying for a uh, zoo this was internship. This for zoo residencies or even zoo internships. And okay. So okay. Didn't match to anywhere. Okay. Um, and I wasn't like casting a net that was like, I'll take anything that has the word zoo in it. Like I had, right. I knew the programs I had. That's why mentorship is important. I could talk right. to people and be like, is this a good fit for me? Like, should yes. I rank every single thing. Um, so I didn't match. I thought I had a chance, but I clearly did not. Um, and I remember, I think I had like a dentist appointment that morning too. So I woke up, didn't match, went outside and my dad and sister had sent me like a congratulatory gift basket no! that I had to call them and be like, gift basket doesn't congratulate me for anything. Um, and then I had to go That's sit at so the dentist. That's so sweet, but oh my god! Yeah, during the time where you should be scrambling, right? Like if you didn't, you're like calling people, you're yeah. um, calling your mentors and being like, "Hey, what's out there? Did did a program not match? Right. Can I? Yeah. Who can I put my resume in front of? Like, how do I get my CV out to the right people? Because there are places, right? Um, and there I were didn't know of... that. I didn't know the scramble happened, but I've talked to several specialists. Oh yeah, that had to scramble, and I mean, they ended up working out but I never one of the realized. most brilliant internal medicine doctors I know who was an intern mate of mine at West LA scrambled into West LA it happens like sometimes it just the, the algorithm gets a little off but yeah. for me it was not the algorithm was off it was just there are so many great applicants so <laughs> um, that, this is before all of the zoo internships were in the match some of okay. them were not at that time so I had what I then like to call like the 90 days of failure I didn't match I didn't I like had like 10 applications out didn't get any of the positions and I was just sitting there like okay I can do GP I'm that's fine and at the time I also did something that I think I saw a question about too which was I applied for what I refer to as my backup plan but I shouldn't because it's it's been more than a backup plan but I applied for um starting my MPH my master's yes. in public health at Johns Hopkins um and I got accepted into that program um, a week before I also got um, uh, offered the position of the intern at the National Aquarium in Baltimore. Purely coincidental that they were both in Baltimore. Just worked out. Why? Uh, but like I said, if you write my history backwards, I can make it sound like it was uh, totally Like bad. it was meant to be. Yeah. Oh but my so, gosh. So um, the National Aquarium internship was such a huge change going from like 10 interns, busy internship practice to like I'm the only intern. Um, and like, I'm doing a lot of preventive medicine on, um, they have a huge bird collection, lots of reptiles. And then of course, aquatics. Right. Um, so, oh, and a ton of amphibians. I love frogs and I got to work with frogs every day there. It was amazing. Nice. But that was where I learned like the technical skills for small and delicate, mm -hmm. um, exotic types, you know, like we did a turtle CT and then you would get blood and it's like Meredith just has to learn how to get blood from a turtle. Um, they have a jugular vein. There's a, anatomy is similar enough, but you get yeah. to learn and you know, I would have like the books open yeah. every morning, every evening, like reading through, I would have like the anatomy studies and then like their radiographs up on the screen, like looking like, is that the spleen? Yeah. Yeah. So I credit that year with like really giving me like that good comparative anatomy mm -hmm. and medicine type year. Um, and it, it worked out that I got that position. I had some other things I was going to potentially do. I was going to do a, a year of research. I thought about just going into general practice and, you know, working like volunteering at a zoo or working yeah. part time. I will say, I know people will let you volunteer at zoos. It does break my heart a little bit to have a DVM and have people not pay you for what you offer. Um, so try and try and we're trying to change that slowly, but like, I get it. There's so many people that want to do it that people do it for free on their weekends to come yeah. in and shadow a vet. But I like to tell people that once you have that DVM degree, probably people should be paying you for your, yes. Yes. For your veterinary smarts. Yes. Um, but I think um, it worked out really well. I did part-time on site. So on Mondays, I worked Tuesday through Saturday. And on Mondays, I would go to class at Hopkins. Um, and then Tuesday through Saturday, I'd work. And then in the evenings, I would do nothing but work and homework. Okay, um, wait, so the
is the MPH one year? It is was it? a three year part time degree. So I took it with me to my okay. residency, but I did all of the you have to do some on site or like in person. So I could do them all while I was in Baltimore, which worked out really well. Um, so the and, MPH uh, was an advantage. Like, do you find a lot of zoo vets have the MPH? Not a, a few have that that or um, there's a degree of a master's of preventive veterinary medical. Um, MPVM, yeah, Preventive Veterinary Medicine. Okay. Um, or like folks will have like actual master's degrees where they like wrote a much thicker thesis than yeah. I did. Um, for me, the MPH really helped with, I have a good epi background, I have good stats knowledge, and I have good population kind of management. Mm -hmm. um, Hopkins is a very people focused MPH, which is fine, but we, um, there's a whole group of us that went there um, that's like spearheaded by this genius woman that helps me with my capstone which is kind of like your thesis right um and she's done like all this great zoonotic disease work with um pets and people um but she refers to us as the vet mafia um so there's like a small <laughs> little group of vet folks that have like our hopkins aligned that yeah. are like we're like yeah hey vet mafia yeah there's this cool job posting at like fda or yeah. um for the cdc or those kinds of things so we all kind of keep each other abreast of those cool purposes but that's very very cool i had no idea yeah. The, the the dual degree thing yeah. happened and you could do it yeah. part time. So I did um, my MPH, I ended up, um, and you could take like a whole class on like tuberculosis, which to some people they'd be like, why? But yeah. I work with, um, you know, hoofstock where TB is a huge thing with um, primates where TB is a huge thing. And then more importantly, where other mycobacteria in birds and multiple other species, that's a big deal. So learning about even just like the immunology of how TB works was very helpful. There's a whole class on malaria. Hey, we deal with avian malaria all the time. Yeah. So um, for me, it helped too with that. And it was, I'm, I'm a nerd. I love learning. So it was really fun. Um, and you were taught by like the guy that discovered this or that because, you know, those, those people. Yeah. But um, my MPH, I was actually told point blank by the people when I did match, which was after that year at um, National Aquarium, when I matched to the wildlife um, Conservation Society or Bronx Zoo, that group. Um, nice. They were like, yeah, part of the reason that we like picked, like ranked you so high was because of that MPH. We wanted you to come in and help us with some research. And I was like, nice. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and then I used my MPH type skills. Um, I joked there was a whole class on how to run effective meetings. Like it was called Practice of Public Health, but it was like, how do you run meetings and communicate effectively? Hey, that goes back to what we were talking about, right? Yeah. Like communication and um, you know, having those kinds of skills. And like, that's what I use in my everyday here, right? Yes. Is like being able to talk to um, people, send the, send an appropriate agenda meeting, not waste people's time, and then like have action items afterwards. The, you know, the, the part of vet school that no one, or being a vet that no one I was about to do in say, vet school. Yeah. Why is that not just a class in vet school? Like yeah. I, because even if all you do is graduate and you're the veterinarian at a practice, you are managing people. You're a leader. You're, yeah. yeah. And you're doing uh, meetings and you have to deal with like, you know, those yeah. interactions and you hate those meetings. I hate those meetings where nothing gets done or yes. accomplished or decided. Yeah. Like, I'm like, no, no, no. Like, who's going yeah. to follow up with this? Like, what yeah. is the plan? <laughs> so. I joke with people, like, I have, and now, like, because we have the cloud and everything's, like, so um, different. But it's, like, yeah, you have, like, running action items, deadlines. You get people, like, um, you get them lined up for success. And it's, like, those are the things that the skills that I didn't learn in vet school that you kind of learn positionally as you go from being, like you said, you walk into the room as a brand new baby vet. Like you, you graduated three weeks ago and now you're in mm -hmm. charge. You walk into exam room and you're like, hello, um, I am, would like to take a history of your animal. Yeah. And it's like, you yeah. have to learn those kind of like positional leadership skills of like, my dad was a ship's master. So he was a captain of a, of a ship. And he, I remember we drove out to LA to drop me off for my internship. And he was talking to me about like, you have to approach a situation like I'm the captain, like, hi, don't worry, I'm here. He's like, even if you're terrified, you step yeah, into that say. role and you're like, hi, I'm here. I, um, and he's like, admit when you don't know something, if it's appropriate to do so, be like, I'm going to go find that out for you. And I think some yeah. of those really, um, like communication and like leadership skills, like you kind of pick up, but it's really cool to also have that, um, taught to you very didactically. So my MPH, I, like I said, I, it was a great program. I did also get to spend a week in Barcelona doing a like, um, uh, like workshop there. So like, I right. can't complain. 
Can't complain. I like Although, it. like, I, like I stay up way too late. I could not stay up until, like, 10 to eat dinner. I was like, I need... I need to bring back the midday naps and like the late night partying that exists in this culture. It would be amazing. I was gonna say, yeah. I visited um, my mom in Europe and I was like, mm -hmm. the meals are so long and <laughs> nothing's open over lunch because everyone's like resting. Like, what is this? Like, well, the meals culture? are so long, especially to someone like you or I in veterinary practice where you're so used to being like, cool, I'm gonna answer two emails and just like yes. cram my lunch down. Like, yeah. I yeah, did appreciate so. that too. National Aquarium had like a sacred lunch hour. And like, it was so good also for like team camaraderie. Like I go have my lunch with various different and team members. Out. And it's like, you learn so much by, yes. and you can do so much more as a doctor by having that kind of camaraderie with people. Yes. Like I remember we were trying to talk people into taking a sloth for a CT. It was like a very big deal. And it's like, because I knew that team is like, hey guys, I'm gonna level with you. Like yeah. let's chat. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I, yeah. I, I do think that is so important in your career is going to be more successful the more you can connect with your team okay. um, and they like buy into what you're trying to do and the culture. We have actually a two hour lunch where I work now and oh, nice. a lot of times things like flow into that a little bit, but mm -hmm. I love it and everyone can like breathe yeah. a little bit, you know? Yeah. So um, it looks like Nick in 98 or Ty said hi from w Oh yeah. Yes. So it's I fun how like yes. Small... I was actually um I was really hoping this year I had it circled on my calendar to go back in the summer and clearly no one traveled anywhere. I was gonna say. Year. I was gonna say but yeah. I would love to get back to New York to say hi to all those people. I get to watch them on the um T V show periodically. The show. But it's yeah. not the same. It's not the same. Well you let's let's not you were on your show too. So Yeah, we're we're like the spin off. We're like the San Diego spin off of the cool New York show. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Okay. So Instagram's going to kick us off like yeah. hard stop at nine. So let okay. me make sure I cover everything. So yeah, you, bet. you got into your residency next or another internship? Residency, yeah. So okay. I did a small animal internship internship at National Aquarium and then lucky enough to get the WCS residency um, from three years? 2011. Three years. Yeah. Three year residency. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that was like everything. I felt like I was like, oh my God, I, I made it. Like it's like. A thousand days of learning to be a zoo vet. This is the most amazing thing in the world. And that's the other thing too. Like I loved my residency. Like there were hard days. There were long days. Um, a little known fact about the WCS residency is that you actually live um, on site at the Bronx what? Zoo. I live also, also rent free. Um, I live, well, I guess my rent was that I was always. Wait, there. was it like a tree house? And it was like so um, magical. One of them kind of is like a little like apartment in a little foresty thing. But um, I lived um, I actually it. in the hospital, um, like so just cool. down the hall from my office, um, which when you then move somewhere where you have to commute, you're like, what is this nonsense? <laughs> yeah. But um, traffic. Yeah, uh, I loved um I loved everything about it. I loved New York. I loved being able to like go and take the train and go to the symphony. I love going to museums. I also just love like walking the High Line and everything about eating at amazing restaurants. Um, and like for me, it was a very good match. And I think that's one of the other things um, for both internship and residency, if you can, but most importantly for your job is making sure that the culture and like the people are a good fit together. Mm -hmm. Like I, I feel so fortunate that I had such a good time and loved everything that I did there. Um, even on the nights where we like had a gorilla on 24 hour watch and I was like exhausted. Um, it, you, I felt like I was learning something. I felt appreciated, but I also felt like I had something to give and it was, it was a great residency. So you're stationed primarily at the Bronx Zoo, but we also provide care at WCS. They also provide care for the New York Aquarium um, that's in Brooklyn, um, Prospect Park Zoo also in Brooklyn, the Queen Zoo in Queens, wow. um, and Central Park Zoo in downtown Manhattan. So um, yeah, and you get to like experience a lot and it's also a ton of very different personalities. So I'm a girl from Texas, spent some time in LA with my yeah. celebrity types, Moved to Baltimore, pretty much the exact opposite of Manhattan Beach is right. Baltimore. They're the yeah. exact opposite. Yeah. Um, then I moved, and I love Baltimore. It's very cute. Um, and then I moved up to Bronx. Baltimore, Bronx, pretty pretty similar. Okay. Um, and then um, I came back out to San Diego. Yeah. So it's like, it was a huge transition. And I think the thing that um, people joke a lot about, um, people in Southern California are kind of soft. And I think that's a little... It's kind of true, but in a nice way. Like they're very granola hippie. Like they yeah. want to talk about feelings. 
Whereas in New York, like someone's checking you out at the like, you know, grocery store. They don't want to make small talk. They're just yeah. going to get you through. So yeah. I had to like relearn my like Southern small talk. Be like, oh, right, right. I, I smile at people and say hello. Like, hello, let's chat about something. Yes. <laughs> I will tell you, because my internship is in California and I yeah. came from Texas. And the first time I called a fancy California horse owner, ma'am, I got my head bit off. Oh, yeah. And I learned she thought you meant quick. she was very old. Yeah. Yes. I was it's... like, I'm sorry where I'm from. It's just a term of respect. Well, that means you think I'm old. And I was like, I am so sorry. <laughs> You're like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, I am. Um, Quick. My residency mentor, um, who's at the at WCS, he did his residency in Tennessee. And so he's a Brooklyn kid, born and bred. And when he was down in Tennessee, he's like, people just talk so slowly. <laughs> and they want to know how you're doing. They really yeah. do. Yeah. You can't just be like, I'm fine, blah, blah, blah. Like, they no. want to know how you're weak. Like, was. look at me. Look at me. And like, yeah. let's, let's connect. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. I feel that. Well, okay. So couple big questions so now yeah. you are back in san diego i did have a question if you think it's too personal tell no, me but can you give me like general salaries when you did like internship residency stuff sure. and then now and debt load like do you know if because that's a lot of yeah so um one is i went to i keep like telling like 1.2 point but one is i went to my state school because it was the most affordable option i went to my state school and i tried to get through while i still had some undergrad salary or salary uh, scholarship also yeah um and i don't think paying a ton of money for an out-of-state school just because you think it has a slightly better zoo program or something is gonna get you the reward that you want it to okay. so like i would highly recommend your state school it is great bang for your buck um, if you don't have an in-state school, there's probably a contract or something like mm -hmm. that. Just think about it. It's a good idea. Mm -hmm. You don't need to go to a fancy school to get a cool job. Okay. Um, and then um, for internships, I think um, most of the small animal internships I looked at when I was doing this, so this is now over 10 years ago, <laughs> I know. Um, were um, like 30s, 30,000, something what, yeah, like that. I made 30 for my econ yeah. one. Yeah. Um, and then I think my um, specialty internship was maybe like 32. So it wasn't a lot. Um, <laughs> it was like a my, little bump. Yeah. My residency, I like I said, housing was provided. So that one's a little hard to then, because like housing was just taken care of. I was right. just paying for like the full HBO experience so I could watch Game of Thrones with our right, team right. like every night because my office was down the hall. Yeah. But I think um, most residencies in the zoo field, um, coming at the shockingly low, um, right of like 40 to 50s, um, which can be challenging. And yes. I totally understand. And I think it's something a lot of people are thinking about and thinking of how do we do it differently. Yeah. Um, I will say I don't ever want to have like our residents, I think we do a really great job of training them. And um, I don't actually know their exact salary, which I should. Um, but they spend time at Davis, down at the zoo, and then at the park. So you do have to move, too, which is, God, who wants to, and, like, moving from, like, the Sacramento area down here. Like, it's not cheap places to live. Yeah, yeah. But I think that um, the other thing is, like, you shouldn't, as a zoo intern or s something like that, ever feel like you're just being, in, like, used as cheap labor or an underpaid associate. Like, there should be some training that's involved. Like, yes. there should be good mentorship and training that's mm -hmm. involved. That's kind of the compensation is, like, we're spending time on you. Um, like I said, my residency mentor, um, he used to joke that, like, residents don't really pay for themselves until their third year. Because um, you should be spending yeah. time really training them. Um, and then the median zoo salary is also, I, everyone's going to just love this one. I think it's a cool 83000 um, which uh, obviously is all across the country. Right. Um, and that's, uh, it kind of, I'm trying to think of like the different offers that I've seen. Um, it's more in California, obviously, because we have to pay for people to be able to afford to live here. Right. Um, it's not at all. I think in San Diego County, a board certified zoo veterinarian makes like a median salary of like 179000 And I, I can tell you that is not what I make. Um, but that's all those surgeons and fancy yes. people. And yes. I'm sure it's just us zoo vets and shelter vets that are bringing down the bringing down the hour. Well, yeah. Okay. So that was a question. Do some people like do a residency, but then go into like general practice or open just like a, a private, a private practice, mm -hmm. more exotic, you know, sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, 
some of the my colleagues that sat with board for boards with me so i took the zoo boards in 2017 some of them are um actually working in private practices and up in la um and like they're accm so diplomats of the american college of zoo medicine but their specialty their subspecialty was um uh, zoo companion animals okay. and then folks can also do board of uh practitioners so a AVP um, yeah. with like avian or reptiles and um, amphibians or things like that. Zoo companion, like I think pocket pets, exotic small mammals. Yeah. I can't yeah. remember all them, but yeah, so you can do that. Um, and like, then there are folks that got board certified, worked in the zoo for a while. And then we're like, you know what? I'm going to go take care of goats now. Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. that's the interesting thing to me though, is because you do work with hoof stock more than anything else. And I, I think it's interesting because I just always thought like zoo or exotics and I just imagine like everything, but it's really, you get really specific with your like species, it seems like. Yeah. Um, Depending on where you end up for sure. Like there are folks that just do primate medicine, like that are at yeah. a primate lab or a primate sanctuary. Um, there are folks that, you know, primarily do um, uh, like marine mammals or aquatics. Like, you know, if I had kept going down the aquatic path um, and I had done an, a residency that primarily focused on aquatics, it would have been a hard transition for me to then come back to right. the safari park where the only aquatic animals I deal with are, are mountain yellow-legged frogs and two platypus. Um, so, you know, not not a ton of aquatic yeah. um, here. But, but the platypus, the platypus oh, yeah. is like your thing. And I, we only have seven minutes, but oh, I yeah. think like, I definitely would love people to check out like the story of the platypus at the zoo because you were instrumental in getting them there and taking care of them. And you got to travel to Australia. Australia. Yeah. Yes. I spent two um, weeks uh, and in Australia um, as actually part of the government agreement that I'm um, Australia for them to be ambassadors um, outside of the country of Australia. We, they required the Australian government um, that both keepers and um, vets learn how to appropriately take care of them. And it was like such a cool effort. It just shows you that no matter what, especially I think in zoo medicine, but I think in all of veterinary medicine, there's always opportunities for learning and something new and something cool to like sink your teeth into. So now it's like, I'm like the go-to person on like monotremes, right? So like echidnas and platypus and you're like, if you had like, asked me a decade ago what I'd be doing, like that wouldn't have been the answer. Yeah, no. But it's like, cool. That's the yeah. coolest thing about this job though. And that's what I try to get across to vet students is there's so many opportunities and I don't think this career should be linear yeah. in any way, shape or form. And there's so many opportunities you don't even learn about until you're in vet school. And right. you're like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Like who doesn't want to be a federal, like, you know, CDC, like CDC has people that are veterinarians that are investigating yes. COVID. Like they have those like amazing researchers that are, you know, figuring out the next, like, I don't know, vaccines for some other disease like that. That can be a veterinarian too. It's a really amazing field. Well, I, I like talking to you because you yeah. love what you do still. Yeah. And I do too. And I think part of that is finding what you're passionate about and then, you know, pursuing it, but also being willing to like make changes when needed and challenge yourself when needed and just yeah. not getting like stuck and stagnant and, you know, knowing that you can always do more or try something yeah. new. Um, and that I think gives you a successful career no matter what. Yeah. It's, it's totally about figuring out like what brings you joy and what you can bring to the world. And then like trying to find the marriage between those two things. And I think absolutely like, you don't want to you don't want to practice the same year of medicine like 50 times and then retire. You no. want to be like constantly changing, keeping learning. And then like like you said, like maybe your passion is like TPLO, so learning how to do a very specific knee surgery and you want to become like the best at that. And that's some people's personalities, that's fine. But maybe you're like about like you know mentorship and education or maybe you're about like I want to work on conservation. There's always something new um, or leadership in our field maybe bringing in more diversity and inclusion yes. figuring out how we pay interns more like there's always some work that needs to be done for people to be able to um really stretch and grow and i like that idea that you brought up like being a little uncomfortable and pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone is how you grow and it's like it's such a cool part of our career that you get to do it really is and i I'm so thankful that you came on. Yeah. I had so many people who were so excited about this and I'm going to save this Instagram live. So people okay. who missed it can watch it. And then tell us if anyone wants to reach out to you, what is the best way to get a hold of you or email you if they just yeah. follow up? Like I wish questions. I had, I have like a little business card at some point that I could have just held up, but it's my you can name type it. I can type it in there right now. Yeah. In the, yeah. in the it's comments. M Clancy, um, 
at um, San Diego Zoo org. Um, and then you need to tell Bugby and Lindsay how much fun you had. So yeah, this happy. was so much fun. I love it. Okay, let me make sure I actually have this spelled right. Yep. Um, yeah, feel free. Um, and then the other thing I always say as a caveat is like, if you email me and I don't immediately respond, I'm sorry, the email inbox gets a little full. Yes. Sometimes it's fine. To, g give me a give me a week or two. And yeah. then feel free to ping me again. And I'll try and yeah. get there. Um, and right now, just the other thing is like COVID's thrown a wrench into a lot of our student externships and things like that. Um, but I think that we're all working hard to make sure that we can meet the next generation of amazing colleagues um, and that we can provide for them well. It's just um, taking us a little bit of time to quite figure that out. So. It is. And I, a lot of students stress that they're not getting those externships or hands on. And so I tell them now's the time to virtually connect and yeah. network as much as you can. And then, you know, just as many like webinars and other things, just like you said, learning the medicine, learning as much like surgery, understanding as much mm -hmm. as you can, even if you're not getting that hands on, we, we get that they're not getting that and I'm not yeah. going to judge them for that. We're going to yeah. support them through it. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Like, I mean, this year is probably the first year where we're getting residency applicants that are like, I had some externships canceled and you're like, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So I think we're all aware and we're all trying to be good, but yeah, virtual, especially these kinds of things and how good we're all getting at zoom and like virtual presentations yes. and stuff. It's an exciting time to reach a wider audience too. Yeah. Well, I um, appreciate you and I'm so proud of you. I'm proud of our oh, class. Thanks. And yeah. I just, it's fun. Thank to you so much for are. this opportunity. It's so cool. All the work that you've been doing. It's, it's really awesome. The outreach and just like the cool, um, I guess, people that you have that are so excited to hear from you. It's a really cool way to reach an amazing group of people. Well, we have yeah. an awesome next generation. Like I yeah. think veterinary medicine is like moving in a very positive way. Yeah. direction if we can like almost take lessons from them too you yeah. know so and there's so many students on here that I love and I've connected with so I appreciate you thank you so much y'all I will put this up on Instagram yeah. at TV live and then we'll hopefully catch up in the future if yeah. people have more questions maybe we'll yeah. do a part two so yeah sounds great All right. thanks so thanks much today to take a night have a nice right. night bye bye all right, guys, that was awesome. I am so glad you joined us. Like I said, I will put this up on Instagram uh, TV live and you guys can uh, check it out. You can make sure to share it. So if you have uh, friends that are interested in, in Zoo Vet, they can kind of hear Dr. Clancy's story. Um, basically, she is a firm believer in all the things that, you know, I really believe in networking, having a strong foundation, keep pursuing your dreams, that there's going to be struggles. It's going to be difficult, but if you really want it, it's going to be worth it. It's going to pay off. And we just love veterinary medicine, and we really think that you can graduate and love it too. So if you have questions, let me know. Reach out. Uh, DM me. Uh, but make sure to share this so as many people as possible um, can take advantage of Dr. Clancy's awesome knowledge and information. Thanks, y'all. Have a good night. Bye.